It happened in Iconium that they entered together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spoke that a great multitude both of Jews and of Greeks believed. But the disobedient Jews stirred up and embittered the souls of the Gentiles against the brothers. Therefore they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who testified to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews, and part with the apostles. When some of both the Gentiles and the Jews with their rulers made a violent attempt to insult them and to stone them, they became aware of it and fled to the cities of Lyconia, Lystra, Derby, and the surrounding region. There they preached the gospel. At Lystra a certain man sat impotent in his feet, a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. He was listening to Paul speaking, who, fastening eyes on him and seeing that he had faith to be made whole, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. He leaped up and walked. When the multitude saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice, saying in the language of Lyconia, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. They called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercury, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Jupiter, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gate, and would have made a sacrifice with the multitudes. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their clothes and sprang into the multitude, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and bring you good news, that you should turn from these vain things to the living God, who made the sky and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who in the generations gone by allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways. Yet he didn't leave himself without witness, and that he did good, and gave you rains from the sky and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Even saying these things, they hardly stopped the multitudes from making a sacrifice to them. But some Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But as the disciples stood around him, he rose up and entered into the city. On the next day he went out with Barnabas to Derbe. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that through many afflictions we must enter into the kingdom of God. When they had appointed elders for them in every assembly and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they had believed. They passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. When they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed to Antioch, from where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work which they had fulfilled. When they had arrived and had gathered the assembly together, they reported all the things that God had done with them, and that he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. They stayed there with the disciples for a long time.